Today we're going to be continuing our conversation about isotopes and adding in average atomic mass. So first I want to pause and let you go ahead and write your essential question. So your essential question should be in response to the TEEK. Students will be able to describe the current understanding of the atom and calculate average atomic mass of an element using isotope composition. So, we're going to go ahead and quickly remind ourselves what an isotope is. And an isotope is going to be any form of a single element that has a different mass due to it having a different number of neutrons while maintaining its same number of electrons. Since it will have a different number of neutrons, it will have a different mass. And each isotope has something that we call a mass number. This is different than the atomic mass than, that you will find on the actual periodic table because mass numbers are one single thing. They have no decimals. They are whole numbers only. We're going to go ahead and we're going to see the different types of isotope notations that we can have. There are two main types that we're going to see in this class that we'll go over. So we have our nuclear notation and what I'm going to be calling our just standard isotope notation. So in our nuclear notation, we have a large X with two smaller texts that are going to be floating toward the left. And for our standard isotope notation, we will have our element name followed by the same M. Now what these actual codes mean, we'll discuss. Okay, so X isn't going to obviously be there for every single element. This is just meant to be a formula, okay, that you can plug in for each individual atom. So X is actually supposed to be our element symbol. Okay, this is coming from our periodic table. As you can see here at our code in the top, our symbol is going to be our generally one to two letter shorthand for our element. And so for nuclear notation, we have our element symbol as our main piece, followed by our mass number for that particular form of the element. Now in nuclear notation, it's floating in the upper left-hand corner but for isotope notation, it's just denoted next to it. Finally, we have our atomic number. For our nuclear notation, it appears in the bottom left-hand corner of our element symbol, but it appears nowhere in our isotope notation. Now, some important things to note. Remember that our mass number is going to be just strictly the mass, which would be the number of protons plus our number of neutrons as a whole number. And remember also that our atomic number is just our number of protons. Another thing to note is that for our just standard isotope notation, this is a hyphen, it is not a negative. It will not be carbon negative 12, it's just carbon 12. Now that we've talked about our isotopes, we're gonna go ahead and utilize this information to figure out our average atomic mass. This average atomic mass is what we see on the actual periodic table when we see the atomic mass. Atomic mass, this thing with all of the decimals, that is going to be an average of all naturally occurring isotopes. And we're going to figure out how they calculated it and calculate it ourselves today. Now for calculating average atomic mass, we do have some steps and I've already identified them for you and we're gonna go through them step by step. So our very first step is going to be to convert all of our percent abundances. This is going to be how likely we are to find uh, that particular isotope on the earth. And we're gonna take them from percentages to decimals. Now how we do this, you can do this one of two ways. You can think of it in one of two ways. You can either 
just move the decimal to the left two times, or if that makes you uncomfortable, you can divide that percentage by 100, and that will do the exact same thing. So but whenever we're calculating our average atomic mass, we are going to start by converting all of our percentages into decimal form so that we can use them for calculations. Now our step two is going to be multiplying each different isotope's mass, so that's the mass number, by the new abundance that we just found, so that decimal form of the abundance. This is our last step. Our step three is going to be to add up all of the products from all of the abundances and all of the isotopes' individual masses and check to see if we are close to correct. If we are correct, our products should be approximately the same number that we find on the periodic table. So let's go ahead and do an example. So for our example here, I have carbon 12 and carbon 13. I have their uh, respective abundances written next to them. So the likelihood of my finding carbon 12 on the earth is going to be 98.89%. Whereas carbon 13, I have a likelihood of 1.11%. So I'm going to look back at my steps and I'm going to see step one, I need to convert all of my percent abundances into decimal form. So I've gone ahead and written out step one. And you can see I've moved my decimal for 98.89% and I've turned it into 0 0.9889. So I moved it once, twice, that put the decimal in front of the nine. In case you do not believe me that that is the same thing as dividing it by 100, um, we can go ahead and plug it in here. So 98.89 divided by 100 gives me the same as just moving the decimal over. So pick the method that you like better, but we are going to go ahead and keep just talking about moving the decimal over. I did the same thing with my 1.11% abundance. I moved the decimal over twice, once, twice. When I did that, I skipped over the one and then I had to add a zero as a placeholder. If these really small percentages make you uncomfortable, this is a time when you would definitely use a calculator so that you know that your number is correct. Okay? You could also check to make sure that these converted correctly. If they add up to one, you did it right. Okay, for step two, we're multiplying each uh, isotope's mass by our new number. So I pulled the mass from my example, so carbon 12, and then carbon 12's new uh, abundance was 0 0.9889. So I did 12 times 0 0.9889. And I got 11.8668. I did the same thing for carbon 13. I multiplied it and I got this number 0 0.1443. Now I'm ready for my third and final step. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add up these products and I'm going to see if they match what is on my periodic table. What I got from my math was the number 12.0111. I'm going to look at my periodic table and I see that the mass of carbon on my periodic table is 12.011. That is close enough to the number that I got from my actual practice. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I did this correctly.